Say with me the mystery of the word. Say it again. Say the mystery of the word. I want us to get into a few things. There's a lot of people watching online. We want to welcome you for those who are watching from all over, uh, international and local from every country. And uh, we're not going to mention it right now, but uh, we want to welcome you. And, uh, you know, we thought a few years ago when we started when we started online that we thought it's going to be, um, it is going to be, uh, 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 we put an investment in online and um, we thought it is going to be in vain or not really picking up. And it really has. I think we're getting close to a million almost a month in just by online giving. That really supports the church because financially the country has been hit hard and a lot of people's income has been hit and all the churches are seeing that. So online is really assisting us just to be normal in that regard. Okay, uh, so um, we really take online serious and we appreciate everybody that is online. We're going to ask you to share the broadcast. Keep sharing them if you touch by our teachings, if you touch by the word and we get messages almost daily of uh, people saying how they are touched by the word, how they touch. We are um, on TV channels, we are on YouTube, we are on Facebook, we, so we're all over. And um, so uh, we want to make that, uh, make that, uh, uh, you know, just keep making that experience good. Uh, say with me first fruits. And, and I believe Pastor Martin ministered on first fruits, you know. I know that Jesus Christ is the first fruit. Is the main first fruit, but it never removes the um, the idea of uh, it never removes the idea or the principle that when we give our first fruits, when we do, it is acting and getting into covenant, believing as Christ was given as a first fruit, the act that God has done, that we believe in that act. You see, the fact that we are called the seed of Christ. The fact that Christ was called a seed tells you that God believes in sowing and reaping. Are you guys with me? The fact that when he, yes, the sound, the fact that he sowed um, a seed, he sowed Christ and reaped many brethren, which is you and I, it means that God believes in the principle of seed time and harvest. If God believes in the principle of seed time and harvest, it is a principle that He has found you upon, Christianity upon. Are you guys with me? Because when Christ was sown, you have the ability to receive Him and accept Him by faith. And Christ comes inside of you. Jesus is in heaven, but Christ lives in you. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Jesus as in His physical form, as in His, I don't want to say human body, but He's been given a glorified body. His body of flesh that was transformed, changed into His glorious body uh, is sitting by the throne, worship, uh, uh, interceding on your, me and your behalf. Are you guys with me? 2 Timothy 2 verse 26. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 verse 26. And I'm going to try to get into this word a few aspects. Say with you, meditation. Um, first of all, where's that book that we are selling? Give me a copy of that book. How many has this book? Raise your hands, let me see. Okay, that's some. Uh, huh? The others, um, we don't know what is happening yet with the others. But this is a brilliant book. We're going to go the whole month through touching on the concepts and the subject of this book. Uh, this is a really good book. So it is, it is a whole commentary, basically, of the Old Testament. And it is a commentary that can cause you to, and it can be found on Amazon, everywhere you can find the physical copy here. But, you know, it tells you how to study the Word. And I know they shared this with you already. But um, it is, and then it goes through every, what is so nice is if you want to say, I want to study the prophetic books, all the prophets. And then you go to the prophetic books, and they are on you, the prophetic, the minor prophets, the major prophets. Um, and you go and study them, the book of, okay, the New Testament we're working on, the book of Daniel. And you just go read through this with your Bible. It will give you an immediate understanding. Without you having to go Google. Now from this you can do deeper research if you want. But just reading this, I mean, it'll take you five minutes to read through a whole Old Testament book. 
to give you the whole concept of the book. Meaning, if you don't understand the Bible, you can do this within a maximum of 28 days. You can read through this book. Are you guys with me? No one should take longer than that. I mean, even if you go a little bit of faster pace, because it's so easy to understand. And you can make notes in here and everything. So uh, if somebody asks you, you know, what is the book of Chronicles? You will know exactly what it is about. Are you guys with me? So please get this book. It is a great book. Why is it so expensive? It's 500 pages and it costs a lot to print. So it's not like a normal book. You go buy a normal book by Kum Books. I think it is like 390 or something now. Eh? Just like a normal size book. So, so you'll be blessed by, by this. Um, and we don't really make money on this. You don't, no one makes money in South Africa on books. I want to clarify that. No one, I know we have many online viewers, even people that have written books, they'll tell you no one makes money. So we're simply doing this to be a blessing to you. It is only once people get published and they get advances and so on where they really get money. Or, uh, you know, but not in South Africa. They, I don't even believe there is really true Christian publishers in South Africa that is... Um, that is effective. We have seen a lot of them. So the best is just to self-publish. We, we anyway have more influence than most of your public, if there is any publishers in South Africa. So, um, and uh, uh, so, but let's get back into the Word. So that's the Word. And we're going to go this whole uh, month on the mystery of the Word. But I got onto the subject, meditation. Say with him, meditation. And the Lord ministered to me and said, I must minister this week, next week on the art of meditation. Because the body of Christ knows one part. They know meditating on Scripture. But they don't know the other part that is too scary. Are you guys with me? I want you to understand when meditation is taken from, or when it is used in an Eastern uh, uh, religions, for example, or Eastern practices, uh, Buddhism, yoga, wherever they use it, New Age, they use meditation. Satan cannot create anything. The sound is a bit better, thanks. Satan cannot create anything. Everything is copied. Are you guys with me? Everything is copied. Everything is duplicated, perverted, and twisted. Everything is copied, taken, twisted. So when... You see somebody sitting on their, however they sit and they meditate. Uh, transcendental meditation, transcendental meditation. And uh, it, the idea and the concept comes from somewhere. But Christians are too scared to tap into that. Now I'm not going to be preaching heresy. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you two arts of meditation that is used in scripture. Is it okay? Yes. It's in Scripture. You'll see how Isaac went out into the fields to meditate. And I promise you, you never read it probably, many. It says Isaac went out into the fields to meditate the whole night. And then he saw, I think it was Rebecca. Was it Rebecca? He saw Rebecca. So something caused him in meditation for his eyes to be opened. To see destiny. Now in no way am I advocating. Endorsing. Eastern meditation. Is that okay? So don't take a sound bite on YouTube. And all this nonsense. I'm not endorsing that. I'm using it to explain to you. Because a lot of, the only art of meditation that people know. Is okay I meditate on the scriptures. And then the other meditation is the one that I should not be doing. My question is what did. Isaac go and do when he meditated in the field. How did Moses, I think it was Moses, it was at the tent of the tabernacle. How did he, how was his posture when God came walking towards him? When the Bible says that he looked and he saw, he was at the tent door and he looked and he saw God walking in the flesh, if I may, which we call a theophany, with two men with him, two angels with him. Some say it is the Trinity that came walking. What mode was he in to be able to have seen that? Give me the scripture where it says, um, let your mind be stayed upon him, something like that. 
I think it's in the Old Testament because it's Yetzer. Give me, give me that verse. So if the book of Philippians says this. It says, um, also, I, I'm just flowing right now. Also give me that verse, the one in Philippians. What's this one? Isaiah Put Isaiah 26. But verse what? 26 verse 3 on. Give me, give me. You will keep, give me the one where it says, um, this mind is in you. You know, that how we should think pure things, etc. I think it is either Philippians, huh? Philippians 2 verse 5. Okay, we'll go there now. Listen to this. You will keep him in perfect peace. Say with me, perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. The word stayed, and I know we preached a little bit on this before, those who can remember with a spiritual ear. The word stayed is, or the word mind, and if you look at mind and stayed, it means yet, sir. Which means my imagination is focused upon you. Not mind, imagination. Are you guys with me? There's a difference between imagination and your intellectual thinking. A lot of people worship God and serve God out of an intellectual thinking and not out of their imagination. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. You cannot worship Him out of an intellectual mind. You cannot. Because you will reason the whole time the supernatural. Are you guys with me? But God has given us an imagination. That's where the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your hearts. The word heart is dionai, which is yetzer, which is imagination. Imagination is a spiritual vehicle given to you. Mm. Spiritual. Say with me, spiritual. Go with me to 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. Your imagination is not physical. Imagination is something that scientists and neurologists cannot, they cannot get a conclusive point on it because it is not a physical, it is something that happens. They can see the activity, but they don't know how it forms. Because they've had people who's lost the part of the brain where they thought imagination comes from, yet the person can still imagine. This is, you can Google that. Are you guys with me? Because they don't understand one thing, a research that came out in 2018, where they say that the heart has, they found neurons, they call it micro neurons, in a person's heart. And they say the heart can literally think. That is why you get something called a broken heart syndrome where somebody's heart can be broken through a physical act, but their actual physical heart, through an emotional act, but their actual physical heart is shattered and in pain. That they actually become sick, some get a heart attack. Are, are you guys with me? And they realize the heart has neuro micro neurons. So that when they say a person imagine, he not only imagines or thinks in his head, he imagines and thinks in his heart. That's why the Bible says the imaginations of your heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So that tells you there's a place, an imagination that you can tap into your heart. That once you touch into that, you become what you imagine. Are you guys with me? What you put your mind and your yet sit upon. Mm. Are you guys with me? Now, have your seats. Imagination. Imagination. Imagination is spiritual. Where's the scripture? Go into one verse before this. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So they're not carnal. So it is spiritual. Mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. So he says the weapons we have is not fleshly. It is spiritual. It is mighty in God to pull down spiritual things. 
Are you guys with me? What are those spiritual things? Next verse. Casting down arguments. Put in the King James Version. Casting down imaginations. So if a weapon is spiritual and it is there to cast down something spiritual and it says casting down imaginations, your imagination is a spiritual place. Theologians only, who only has the Word and not the Spirit, has God in their dialogismos, their intellectual mind. And they oppose anything that is spiritual. They oppose anything that is supernatural. There's this movement coming out in the body of Christ on YouTube, which is very bad, I believe. It's a bunch of reformists. And all they do is to look into the Word and ignore the Spirit of God. Because they worship God on an intellectual way. Are you guys with me? So anything that is spiritual, anything, even Jesus would have come and offend them because He spat on the ground. And it's easy to believe in a historical Jesus. It is not easy to believe in Him. Well, it's for us easy, but not for them when it's in their mind. To believe in a Jesus that lives every day through you and I. That He can still spit on the ground, take the mud, and put it in somebody's eye and they are healed. Are you guys with me? Casting down imaginations. So imagination is a spiritual thing. Go for me to Philippians 2 verse 5. I think it's 2 verse 5. Let this mind, say with your mind, dionai, which is imagination. So you have two words for mind. You have main words. You have dionai and dialogismos. Logismos, logic, dialogismos. That is your intellectual side of your mind. So when the scripture speaks of mind and it uses the word dialogismos in the Greek, you know it's speaking of an intellectual mind. But whenever it speaks of serving God and spiritual matters, it uses dionai, which is your imagination. Let this imagination be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Next verse. Who being in the form of God, thought it's not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Are you guys with me? So say with me imagination, say meditation. So those are the things we're going to be focusing on and the Word of God. Are you guys with me? Go there to Timothy 2 verse 26. Let's get into this. I want to pray for some people just before we go. Uh, 2 Timothy 2 verse 26. Listen to this. And that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. So there are people in the church even here today those who are watching that have been taken captive by Satan to do his will in the church. Are you guys with him? So Satan has three ways of working. He himself can inflict something on someone, but he is not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere at the same time. Uh, or his demons can inflict something on someone, but they're not omnipresent. They are limited also, so they're not everywhere at the same time. And uh, then he has people, agents, that are taken captive by his will. And their mind has been taken captive. The word captive means to be a soldier of war, taken captive by the enemy, owned by them. Their mind is taken captive by the enemy, that now they turn and they become an enemy to the kingdom of God. They destroy the church from within. Those are the ones that we call heretic hunters. Those are the ones that always attack, point out. You know, there's one thing to attack a min or to critique a minister's doctrine. It's another thing to attack his character. So let me tell you this. So when Paul was in uh, Corinthians, there was a lot of ministers that tried to come and attack Paul and young ministers that tried to attack him. And they couldn't attack him on his doctrine. 
they tried to and tried to say stuff on his doctrine, but it was not, uh, it wasn't uh, sustainable and it wasn't effective. Then the only thing they could attack him on was his physical looks. So they begin to say he is a short man. He looks this uh, uh, grotesque. He looks ugly because of all the persecution he went through. And uh, that is why Paul said, listen, even though I'm small, even in, in the physical, it looks like I do not carry authority. He said, I can assure you with the same authority that I'm writing to you now. I will come to you in the physical. So the only thing they could revert to was trying to hit his character to begin character assassination. And you'll see in this year how many in the body of Christ will be assassinated with their character. Do you know how ministers are taken out? It's by character assassination. That is it. Are you guys with me? You know, I have a rule. What I try my best to do is I don't read a lot of stuff that's going on about us. Somebody sent me another YouTube, just a YouTube video that someone's making of us. I didn't even listen to it. I just saw the screen. And I was like, okay, I'm there. Kenneth Copeland is there. It's great. Um, uh, somebody else that was great was there. Um, and, and I'm like, that's a great thumbnail. Let's leave it there, you know? Uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, uh, but you have those who do the will of Satan in the church. Why? The word isn't found in their mind. Their mind has been focused on something else not stayed upon Christ, not focused upon Him. Are you guys with me? So, so let's go to Ephesians 6 verse 13. The Bible speaks of an evil day. Listen to this. An evil day. Ephesians 6 verse 13. An evil day. It says, take up the whole armor of God. Now I'm a little bit all over the show. We're going to focus in on meditation. That you may be able to stand, to withstand. That evil day. Say with me, evil day. There is a day that is evil that will come upon every single person. I don't know if you guys are with me. You can go 20 years or 30 years and you're fine. And all of a sudden you're walking into the doctor's room. And the doctor says, you know what? For 30 years already, there's this disease that is in your body. You've inherited it from your parents or so on. And now it's become cancerous. And you've got two years left to live. And you're thinking, if I didn't go to the doctor, he wouldn't have told me that. Are you guys with me? But what has happened there? You were struck with a day of evil. Your evil day has just arrived upon you. Now it determines, it is determined whether you are standing in the truth. What is in your mind? Because saying I reject this sickness will not work. You know, I refuse to believe it. The Lord is on my, it's not going to work. I believe in the Lord. I believe I'm healed. It's not going to work. Positive confession does not heal someone. It is the word that has been digested in you to cause you to have been transformed already. Are you guys with me? Where your mind is stayed upon Him. That it doesn't matter what the doctor says. Your mind is so saturated by the word. Because the word is alive and powerful. Once you read it, it has the ability to become alive inside of you. There's a difference between reading a book. These are great books, but it's not alive. Are you guys with me? Then you read this word and it has, the, it has some type of um, working on your senses. It has the ability to go into you or all of a sudden, a day or two later, what do you remember? You remember the word. You don't remember something that you wrote, uh, that you wrote, that you read in a book. You remember something in the Word that you read. That all of a sudden has been brought to your remembrance. Because the Holy Ghost will bring to your remembrance the Word that is in you. Are you guys with me? Hmm. I don't know if you guys are with me. So how do I overcome my evil day? Say with me, I need to feed on the words. Say it again, I need to feed. This thing must be in me. You know what the Word does, just something practical. When you are so saturated in the Word, and it's a part of you every day, 
You know how to meditate, which we're going to get into today. You know how to use your imagination. You know how to get the scripture into you. Listen, meditation gets the word into you. Revelation gets the word out of you. Are you guys with me? Meditation gets it in. Revelation gets it out. So how does the word get out of you when you speak by revelation? But it can only be in you by meditation done the right way. Because we see this throughout scripture and I can pull out many scriptures for which I'm going to do. But what this word does is it makes somebody so solid, full of substance, that when you stand in front of them, it is like you can see how secure they are. You can see their eyes is fixated, full of light. Demons are scared of them when they, people feel uncomfortable around them. Why? The Word. Are you guys with me? In fact, people can pray and pray. If they don't have the Word, it matters nothing. So the word meditation, say with me meditation. Go with me, let's go to, one, let's go to Joshua 1 verse 8. Joshua 1 verse 8. I want to give you the only solution to being prosperous and successful. The only solution to being prosperous and successful. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. It's where? From your heart or from your mouth? Okay, so that's, we're going to get there now. Are you guys with me? But you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, say with me, for then, you will make your way prosperous mm, and have good success. This is the first scripture that connects success and prosperity to meditation in the scripture. Are you guys with me? He's saying if you want to be successful, be a success in anything that you do, and you want to be rich, let's just get down to what prosperous means. A lot of people want to water it down because they don't, they, they you know, they don't, uh, they have a fake humility when it comes to finances. So, if you want to be prosperous and you want to be successful, which I hope, dear to God, that everyone here at least wants to be successful and prosperous. If you're not, you're just a worthless, uh, you know, like salt that has lost its flavor and you can be thrown out the windows to be trampled upon. Uh, I'm very dead serious about that. Because if somebody doesn't have a desire to get, it is, a, you know, God places a desire in you. It's called inspiration. The word inspiration and confidence is actually derived from two godly words. It is derived in the Latin. It speaks of, uh, it speaks of a God factor that is in somebody. That they, it's something that is ignited and the world calls it inspired by a divine influence, by a divine inspiration, a divine spark that comes on them. It is only the Holy Ghost that when it comes on you, you can be inspired. It's all of a sudden like the fire of God ignites something. It is an inspiration. There are people that get an inspiration in the world. It doesn't lead them anywhere. Listen, I was inspired with the call of God from day one and I'm still inspired. The flame has never gone out. The desire has never gone out. Are you guys with me? I was listening to somebody, you know, people saying we are witch doctors and all this stuff. And I, I read something the other day, yesterday or the day before yesterday. And I was lying in my bed and I thought, to the, I thought and I thought I was speaking to the Lord. And I said, okay, you know, these guys say I'm Satan's child and you know, they're really doing like a lot of things and trying to influence people and obviously sending people in my church these messages. And I'm thinking, but, so now I'm thinking, okay, but what if I am? But what if I am a false? Because now they say that we don't do what we preach and blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking, okay, what if I am guilty of it? And the thought came to me. So I lied on my bed 
And I thought, but what if I really don't have a relationship with God? That everything is faked. And then the Lord said to me instantly, it's like, but every single day, at most, at all the time when I'm alone, many times when I'm with people, my mind will stay upon Him. I will think about Him. I will speak to Him in my spirit all the time, to the Holy Ghost all the time. If I sit in front of somebody, I'll, I'll be with the Holy Ghost. I'll be like, what do you want me to say? How, how do we do this? This, when I'm alone, all I think about is the church. All I think about is the kingdom of God. What is, and I'm thinking, what foolishness. You know, Elisha said one thing. He said, stop the messenger at the door. When the king's messenger wanted to come to Elisha, to say that the king is going to murder you and kill you. Elisha said, stop the messenger at the door. Because Elisha knew and he said, the murderer is running behind him. He's behind him in his footsteps. Are you guys with me? Meaning if you don't stop criticism about you, your murderer is right behind that. The one that will ruin you, that will discourage your spirits, is right behind the message of critique. I was always told you never have to listen to anyone's rebuke who doesn't love you or takes responsibility for you in the spirit. Are you guys with me? I don't do it. I don't listen to anyone's rebuke that doesn't love me and does not take responsibility for my, for my spirit. So, so Joshua 1 verse 8, say with me, prosperous, say success. So this is the first place where we see that meditation is connected to it. The word meditation means this. It is the Hebrew word hagar. It means three things. Number one, imagine. Say with me, imagine. So the first thing that meditation means is imagine and ponder. Those are the two words, the first part. The second part that it means, say with me, mutter. It means to mutter, to speak under your breath. The third thing it means, say with me, roar. Like a lion, it means to roar the word or to speak so loud that it drains out every thought around you. Are you guys with me? This tells me there are three levels to meditation. Three ways to get into meditation. I, uh, are you guys with me? So listen, listen, listen. The word meditate means to consider deeply, to reflect upon, to revolve in the mind. Let me say it like this. The food you eat is not the food that enhances your energy level. The food you eat is not the ones that enhances your energy levels. The food that enhances your energy levels is the ones you absorb. Are you guys with me? What does meditation do? It causes you to absorb the Word. So food has three levels. It has what we call digestion. Then it has absorption. absorption. Then it's got assimilation. Digestion, I'm eating it. I'm digesting it. Absorption, my body begins to absorb the food to get into the certain organs and places my body where it should go. But then it has an assimilation part, which means to break down and focus on certain small pieces. Unless I take those three phases with the words, where I eat the words, it's absorbed by my spirit, meaning I now reflect upon it. I meditate upon it. Are you guys with me? I begin to imagine the words. If you want to know the greatest key to spiritual, to entering into the spiritual realm, imagination. Are you guys with me? The sound makes it so difficult for me to preach, but I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm really trying my best. It's like a... I just don't know how it could have been right and not right anymore. Imagination. Uh, it causes you, and, and meditation 
it causes you to assimilate the words, meaning you have the ability to digest the word, to eat it. Go Jeremiah 15 verse 16 on the screen. Jeremiah 15 verse 16. And I'll be quick with the message because I want to just pray for some people. Jeremiah 15 verse 16. Your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name. Are you guys with me? He says, look, I found your words, meaning it has to be sought. You cannot just expect to open up the words and to have the word of God. This word, this Bible here is not, ah, uh, I'm going to get into trouble here. Okay, this is a good sound bite. This word is not the word of God. It is the breathe inspired word of God. But when the scripture speaks in relation to the word of God, when it says the word of the Lord came to me, when Ezekiel says the word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah said the word of the Lord came to me. He's not speaking of the Bible. He's speaking of the word of the Lord that actually came to him. Yes. Speaking to him. Yes. So there are three different types of words. For word, you know this. You have logos words, which we always think this is. This is not the logos. This is what we call the graphe. Yes. The written words. Are you guys with me? So you have the graphe word, which is this one. Then you have the logos word. Then you have the rhema word. Then you've got the shalak word, which is a sent word. So when I say this is not the word of God, it is just to, it is just to, just to, uh, you know, just to um, give you a bit of a shock. It is the word of God, but it is not the word of God in scripture when it says the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Okay. So we kind of like get it confused when we read scripture because we think that they are both one and the same. No, 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 no. This must become the word of the Lord to you. This must become a rhema to you. So you can open up this Bible and it might just be a normal graphe. Graphe is the same word used for a normal written book. If something is written in here, it is called graphe. Are you guys with me? That is called graphe. So actually in the Greek, that is a normal book. We know every word is God breathed. We all know that the word is infallible, no doubt. But somebody can pick up that word and start a war with it. Somebody can pick up that word and begin to think that racism is real or they have to beat women. I don't know if you guys understand what I'm saying. This word can only be the word of the Lord with the Spirit of God. Otherwise, it becomes the letter. And the Bible says the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. So when I take this Word and I preach it, without the Holy Ghost, it will bring death to your spirits. Why do I preach the way I do? I'm really on notes. So that there can be life in the words that I'm saying. Are you guys with me? Why are so many churches dead or they cannot receive revelation? Because they haven't taken the Spirit and mixed it with the Word. And Jesus says, you have erred. You have gone into error because you have not both the Word and the power, the Word and the Spirit. So you moved into error. Are you guys with me? So to meditate on the Word causes the Word to become the Word of the Lord to me now. All of a sudden, a scripture jumps out. It becomes my rhema. It is forced into my spirit. I don't know if you guys are with me. It is forced into my spirit. You know, a lot of times when people are going through a situation, people are asking them, I, you know, have you prayed about it? Or if they have to make a big decision, have you prayed about it? When they should have asked, have you thought about it? Just, just, just. My biggest prayer life, my prayer life is when I think on God. Where we're going to get to meditation now. Are you guys with me? To think upon Him. 
where my mind has stayed focused upon Him. I can be alone in a room and I can sit on a chair for eight hours. No jokes. And I can just think on Him. It is to meditate on Him. And in that moment, He begins to open up. He shows you destiny. He shows you things. Revelation comes. I'm not praying in tongues. I'm just thinking on Him. My spirit is stayed upon Him. Tongues is good. It has its place. But the same way meditation. So there are two parts to meditation. We have the art of confession. And then we have the art of contemplation. Are you guys with me? Is this what boring or not? Is it okay. okay. Yet, how must my sound be? I must sound like God. Okay. That is a preacher's joke, but that is just, it's some complex, God complex we have, that we have to have in order to feel the anointing. Somebody said on Facebook, I just want to let you know, since you say that Roman Catholics or Christians, some Roman Catholics or Christians, I am leaving you and I'm no longer following you or supporting your ministry. I'm like, I never knew who you were. <laughs> like, you know, we have 400,000 followers on Facebook. Uh, maybe if you gave something, we would have known who you were. That's just a joke. But people are so full of themselves. They think they do you a favor by just uh, watching your live stream. And I know it's not those who are watching now. It's over a thousand. I hope it's not. But, uh, um, you know, we're not one of those ministries where it's so insecure. Somebody leaves the church and we are getting all scared. You know, I said to another preacher, people leave our church monthly. What do I, I can't control and hold on to people. The only thing I can do is to win more souls. You can't be holding on to people like this. If people want to go, how can you force someone to submit? How can you force somebody to love? Forced submission and forced love is slavery, you know. So how can you, how can you do that? So I was always, I mean, I think this week again, we got people that wanted to leave and I just, oh, I get a message. Bless them. You know, they were just a outside row sitter. What I mean by that is not if you sit in the outside row, because we have people sitting outside row that are serving, but it's just a concept where they just never involved. They're just a pew sitter. So it's easy for them to up and go because they've never invested themselves. And the thing is, people want you to invest into them, but they're not willing to invest them into something, into a vision. You know, so. Uh, um, uh, where were we now? On, we were somewhere. Huh? Two types of meditation. Medica meditation. Medication, meditation. Meditation is the medication of God. Okay. So, the art of confessing and the art of contemplating. The art of contemplating is what people have missed for very long. It is the ability to sit still, to imagine His Word, to be so stayed upon His Word. I want to make this clear. It's not without His Word. Are you, are you guys with me? But what is His Word? doesn't mean you have to now sit and meditate just to quote the Scriptures. No, no, no. If the Word is in you, once you meditate, you become His Word. I don't know if you are with me. Jesus was the Word walking. The Word can still become flesh with you. Once you partake and eat, what do you, you become what you eat. You are what you eat, we have a saying. In the spiritual, you are what you eat. Are you guys with me? So the more you eat the words, you become it. John, eat the scroll. The Bible says was given to him to eat the scroll. Why? So that he can become the word of the Lord. Are you guys with me? So, so I become what I eat, but contemplating is the art of being still, being quiet. Having your mind stayed upon Christ, as I just said, your imagination stayed upon Him. 
Imagination is the gateway into the realm of the Spirit. When I prophesy over somebody, 90% is my imagination. It is just that my imagination is touched by God. Because what you imagine is real. Are you guys with me? We preached on this. The same word yet, sir, which is used for your imagination, was used when the Bible speaks about dumb idols being formed and being created. So it's saying that your imagination is as powerful as a physical object. That what you imagine becomes real. But within the words, say with you, within the words. So have your seat. So it's not a positive confession only. It is having, knowing what the word of the Lord is for you. So what do I imagine? I don't imagine myself being a doctor. That'll be foolish. But I imagine myself with the promises that He has given me. So I sit when I contemplate. I can sit. It's the prayer of contemplation. Madame Guyan did it. Uh, Basilia Schenk did it. Brother Lawrence did it. Uh, all these guys, Sunda Singh did it. All these guys did it. And they would be in a place where they would practice the presence of God constantly. In fact, it would be so upon them that people would get close to them and just begin to weep. Why? Contemplation. The one part of meditation. So what do I do when I contemplate? I sit and I begin to think and reminiscence on what God has done for me. When I think of spiritual things, do you want to have a spiritual encounter? Think on spiritual encounters you've had. Any theologian will go crazy and all this stuff. They know about God, we know God. So, I think when I used to encounter an angel, and then I think when God thought about when God used to speak to me audibly, and then I remember when this happened in the church, when there was this type of move, and then I would daydream. You know when you would daydream, it's like things would go away of this physical world. It's like you're in that thing. Somebody has to shake you out of it. It's the Rayon anointing. Where everything around you, you're in, and that's a vision. Are you guys, are you guys, you sound like you, 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 you know this. I'm teaching you how to get visions. Go and daydream, but know the word in you. If the word is in you, your inner projector screen of your imagination and your subconscious will just project the word the whole time. You say, but if I daydream, there's just, you know, naked women, it's because your mind is full of that. Your heart is full of that. I'm seeing people shooting in a, because you're watching too many movies in that regard. I'm serious. But when the word is in you, your projector, your inner projector, your inner screen will project the word. Now the Holy Ghost can ride on that and bring forth words to your remembrance. And all of a sudden you can hear God speak. And when all of a sudden you're in this daydream and it feels like you're walking in a building or you're walking in your new business, that is a vision that God is giving you there. That is how simple a vision is. There are levels to vision. Inner vision, outer vision, open vision. Are you guys with me? In fact, there are much more levels that we usually get into with our schools. But this is how easy contemplating is. So I, so I would sit and think about what God used to do. The moment you think about encounters, you begin to re-experience that. Now your mind is even more focused. And then you begin to think what He has promised you what is going to come. Are you guys with me? And then, so say with the contemplation. That is the art of contemplation. Uh, med meditation is a type of spiritual digestion. It is a vital school of revelation for you. Meditation places you into the school of revelation. Are you guys with me? It gives you access to deeper dimensions. I'm not speaking of Eastern meditation. I'm speaking of keeping your yetze, your mind, stayed upon the Word of the Lord with what He has done and what He has promised you. You will feel His presence come quicker into your room than what you do anything else. He will be saturated around you, but you will walk out of that place with a God consciousness about you. 
you'll be conscious now when you practice that. Listen, no rich businessman but really wealthy that's a Christian, even those who are not, will tell you they haven't gotten there without meditation. Some might do it the wrong way, some might do it the right way. But they yet said, they imagined, they focused. Because it is your spirit that forces and drives your mind to make decisions. Are you guys with me? So, so, so listen, meditation will drive the Word into your spirit. It takes the Word from your mind that you read and puts it into your spirit and makes your body full of it. It brings the rhema Word to you. It takes the Logos from Grapha and Logos and makes it rhema. Mm, there are three. Then we get to the art of confessing. So with the confessing. This is now where I begin to speak the Word. So the art of contemplation and the art of confessing falls within the three levels, three meanings of meditation. Number one, imagine and to ponder. The word ponder even means to plot something, which I'll get into late, uh, next week or so. It's Im the first level is imagination and ponder, meaning I cannot meditate further unless I do the art of contemplation, of imagining. You were once God's imagination. The Holy Ghost was breathing upon the water, imagining a positive outcome. That's what it says in the Hebrew. So when he brooded upon the waters, he was imagining a positive. So the Bible says constantly fluttering. As like, a, like, a, like a mother hen, like an eagle. Constantly fluttering. Imagining a positive outcome. So God has an imagination. That's why you have an imagination. So the first, the first step of meditation is contemplation, imagination. To ponder, to imagine. When you read the scripture, you begin to imagine. You read a verse, you just sit in your room and you just reminisce on that verse. And you can think, and for there's two hours, whether you put soft music on, but really something with no distractions, nothing. And you stay focused upon the promise of God. See what will happen to you. But it must be in a place of quiet and stillness. Then you get to the art of confessing, where the Bible says now the second meaning of, of meditation is to mutter. Are you guys with me? Which means that now what you have read or what is in your imagination, now you begin to mutter it under your breath. Where, it's where people can not hear you. So when you're with people, you just, oh, a second. Joshua 1 verse 8 says, I'll be a success. Where you begin to say a promise that God has given you. Are you guys with me? Because this word is alive and powerful. So if this word says, now you begin to mutter it. Second level, you mutter, you mutter, you mutter. But meditation is not complete. It is not so much what you hear in prayer, it is what you say in prayer. I'm going to say it again. It is not so much of you hearing the word of God than what it is you speaking and saying the word. So once I go from mutter, I move into a dimension called roar. Where now I am alone in a place. I make sure that I'm alone. That the word has a free way of moving without any distraction. You know when you try to speak loud or so, but you know somebody's listening, you're a little bit like hesitant. That affects the outcome. So God works in a flow with confidence. So when you're able to be alone and you can just begin to shout that which he has promised to you or the word it now moves from mutter to roaring i don't know if you guys are with me mm. you know uh like uh, there was a there was a verse that began to become alive to me when i was going through a lot of pain and sickness but on proverbs 4 verse 22 proverbs 4 verse 22 but what happened i began to imagine on this verse then i began to mutter it until a place where I could speak it loudly, to drown out every thought, to drown out every distraction. Are you guys with me? And it says, for they are life to those. What is they? He's speaking in the context of the words. For the word is life to those who find them. And it is health, say with me health, to all their flesh. 
Now, how does this verse become a revelation? You meditate on it. You contemplate, you imagine, you ponder, you think. Now it begin, you begin to mutter it. After you mutter it, you begin to roar and shout it. Once you have done that, the process of meditation is complete. And the Word is becoming a life inside of you. It's becoming rhema in you. Now you will have the ability to minister or preach it to others. Are you guys with me? Stand to your feet, stand to your feet, stand to your feet. Zedon. I want to pray for those who are here. Just quickly, I want to lay hands and pray for those who are saying to me, and the Lord just told me that to do that as I came into the building. We've never done it before. We usually do it with tithes and so on. But I want to pray specially and specifically a special blessing over those that says that they have or they are going to sow this year their first fruits. First fruits is a very big thing. It is a, um, it's a very big thing because a lot of people, you know, when we started the church, nobody sowed first fruits. They never caught the revelation. It's a very difficult thing to cast, to, to, to catch. Very difficult. But I can tell you and assure you now, everybody that has done it will tell you the blessings that comes from it. Because there's no way where God sows His first fruits, His Son, Jesus Christ, reaps a harvest and will not bless you in the same manner when you're saying, I'm taking that same faith because my God has done it, I'm doing the same thing. Whatever manner of income, the Bible just basically says you take the first of your income, the first of your crops, the first of your fruits, first fruits, and you give it to the Lord, you make it holy unto Him. If that is you, if I want to pray for you here, just raise your hands for me if you're saying you have or you are going to, just come to the front for me. Just come stand here in the front. Let's go break it down. And just tell Kruger's door will be a bit late. Go for it, go for it, go for it. Manifest himself. Let's worship the rest of the church. Yahweh, And for this year to be prosperous, good success, bless them and their households in Jesus' mighty name. I'm 
the first fruits in Jesus mighty name I receive your anointing upon my life in Jesus name come on let's give a praise offering to Amen. Amen. If I can ask everyone for a moment just to remain standing with your eyes closed, no hands raised, please. No hands raised, every eye closed. This is a very sensitive part of the service. Please let's not move around too much. Every eye closed. And no hands raised, please. If you're standing here right now, this is even for those connecting with us over live stream. And uh, if you're saying, Pastor Martin, you know what the service this morning touched my heart and I can feel the unction, the pulling, the tugging of the Holy Spirit. I've lived a life that was contrary to the Word of God. I've lived a life that was not right in the sight of God. I once used to be on fire. I once used to have a zeal, a passion for God and for the things of God, but I've lost that passion, that zeal and that fire. I want to reconnect with God. I want to recommit my life to Jesus Christ. Listen, if you leave this place right now and you are to die, do you know your final destination with certainty? Because there's only two destinations. There's only heaven and there's only hell. If you are standing here and even those connecting over live stream, you're saying, you know what, I'm not sure. Then this call is for you. Now, I'm not going to call you to the front. So please don't let that keep you back. But if you feel that I should raise my hand and that I should respond to this call, then that is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. That is the voice of God and it's best that you respond to that. Amen. So if you can say that, Pastor Martin, that is me. Even if you've never given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and you would like to do that, both for those physically attending and those online, if you can resp respond for those online saying that it is me, for those physically in house, if that is you, just raise your hand for me, please. And I, I, Just keep your hands up for me. Just keep your hands up for me, please. If that is you, raise your hand and keep it up. No one looking around. I see your hands going up. I just want to give it a moment because some people battle with that, struggle with this thing in their heart. Should I raise my hand? What are people going to think? It does not matter. We're speaking about eternity now. 
This is a matter between you and God. Don't care about what the one next to you might think when I raise my hand. I want to give it a moment. I just want to give it a moment. I see, just keep your hands raised high for me, please. Ashish, if you can please locate those raising their hands. Okay, awesome. Thank you. You can lower your hands. I'm going to pray a prayer, and this is even for those that have responded online saying, it's me. I'll be praying a prayer, and I want you to repeat the prayer after me. And I want the entire church to pray this in support to those especially who, who raise their hands, saying, Holy Father, in the eternal name of Jesus Christ, I ask of your forgiveness for every sin that I am guilty of. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God and that He died on a cross for all my sins. Father, I pray, may You wash me, may You cleanse me in the blood of the Lamb. May my sin, every bondage and every curse, be removed from my life here and right now as far as the north is from the south and east from the west may these things be removed from my life father i thank you for your forgiveness that i receive here and right now in full measure lord i love you i give you all the glory i give you all the honor and I give you all the praise in the living name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, give God a praise offering. Then, if you have responded to the call, please uh, just keep the movements limited. I'm still busy. If you have responded to the call, if I may ask those who have raised their hands just to please stay behind for five minutes. Um, there's an usher that will spend some time with you, pray with you. Please don't leave until they've spent time with you. Those connecting online, if you may head over to our online church where we have a team on standby also to minister on to you, to pray with you, to spend some time with you. You may go over to the online church now. And then if I may ask everyone just to close your eyes, raise your hands to heaven as we close the service in prayer. Father, we thank you on this day for the revelation that you have shared with each and every one of us. I pray that the eyes of our, our understanding be enlightened, that the message that I've gone out, even in this morning, will, it will fall on fruitful ground, my God, that by the word we have received, we will have the ability by your spirit to practically apply these principles to our lives and so bear much fruit. Father, we love you and we give you all the glory, all the honor and all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, give God one more, one more praise offering. Thank you so much, Incarnate Church. Tonight we're starting at 4 p.m. with prayer, leading to the service starting at 5 p.m. Hope to see everyone tonight. Thank you so much. If you would like to give into this ministry, we have made giving your tithes, seed, or offering as simple and effortless as possible. You can simply log on to EncounterChurch.co.za or LeonDupria.com and click on the Give button. Here we show you the different ways to give. It's so easy. You will find giving options for local or international giving. PayFast is a fast and secure way for South Africans to give. You can give once off or make a recurring donation. Here you will find the Zapper and SnapScan QR codes as a simple and effortless way to scan and give into the ministry. If you prefer to make an electronic transfer, the banking details of our various campuses and the Visionary Fund are also readily available. For giving internationally, Cash App is one of our fast and simple giving platforms. PayPal is another method for quick and easy giving internationally. You can use your PayPal account or you can give straight from your credit card. DonorBox is also available, which accepts a variety of international giving methods. For those who would like to take hands with us and become a part of the incredible work that God is doing, become a friend and partner of Encounter and Leon Dupria. We have many partnership tiers available to suit your preference. Our friends and partners receive exclusive materials from Leon Dupria, as well as private live streams and exclusive events. Thank you for being part of what God is doing.